Hi there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to reading Machiavelli's Plants. This is our second time around. I this I'm you know going through it chapter by chapter. Today we are looking at chapter one. Now, chapter one actually begins with before chapter one begins is the little title part before it. It's in Latin. The original the one that was in Latin is uh, uh, you know the Alvarez translates Prince of Pates. He, he, but it's Di Principatibilos. Now, uh, um, uh, uh, he says, I use the term principate throughout because it calls in mind with accordance with Machiavelli's intentions, the Roman principate. That is, the principate is uh, of the principate is the part of the Roman Empire of the time of after Caesar, from Caesar until basically uh, the rise of the later empire, empire, then it becomes the dominant, right? They just change from the principate to the dominant, right? The political king to this domination. Um, what Machiavelli is concerned with is not a regime, is not a regime, and uh, in other words, is, is sorry, um, what Machiavelli is concerned with is not a regime and certainly not a territory, but the virtue of the first man. In other words, this virtue of the first man. Uh, 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 and that's what the principat, principatus means, right? The first man, uh, 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 the first citizen, whose virtue is such that he is able to make a state for himself almost anywhere and any time that he is. In other words, this is quality of this ruler, this person, who is through his force of will and force of personality and this condition of his ability of his virtue, his virtue allows him to make a, a, st a status, start, stay, which is an ordering, an order, a new mode and order uh, 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 anywhere he is. Okay. So it's not so much concerned with the, the, a regime so much. And in fact, one of the shocking things about the prince is he's, it, it, it is almost the concept of regime is completely absent from the prince and his, Eric Machiavelli's discussion of this. That one of the key terms of the ancient world was the cost, uh, what we would say some translates constitution. Um, uh, uh, the Greek word is prince, uh, uh, politia, the politia or the regime or the constitutional political form. Um, uh, this is very much shapes the, uh, uh, the thinking of the ancients and the Greeks. The Greeks, Aristotle's famous for politics, Machi, uh, Aristotle, you know, Plato's famous book, The Republic, was the regime in that sense. And the spark, you know, and the Romans themselves think, look at the question of the regime in their uh, uh, thing. Like Cicero will talk about this and the, the character of the Republic and the character of the political form. Polybius will talk about this, about the Roman regime in that sense, in his uh, particularly book six of uh, Polybius's history. But what for Machiavelli, the man is it, the prince, this is why this, this change in the, you know, they understand the Roman Empire. The early Roman Empire with the early Caesars and the later Caesars changed the character from uh, uh, prince, princes, uh, the principality, the principate versus the dominum, dominate. Uh, and this is, this is the thing he wants to stress. And also we have to understand that it was the, the term prince is the term that Augustus himself coins to, to frame it rather than merely Caesar. He calls himself the prince. Prince what? The prince is what? The prince is a civic conception. It's not a king. It's not Rex. Therefore, we have to understand that why does Machiavelli does not call his book the Rex or the king, but the prince. And this is a tribute to uh, Augustus in a sense. Uh, what Augustus does, who, who deigned the, the taboo for the Roman of against Rex, which would be, you know, the idea in Rome, in Roman history, Roman myth, that anyone who would dare to give Rome to be king or to give Rome a king shall be killed. And those who, you know, that's why, you know, uh, a Brutus is the original Brutus who frees the Romans from the kings when his son, a court, his sons and others are caught conspiring to bring back the kings, they're put to death and he will sit back and support the putting the death of uh, 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 those who wish to bring the kings. It is why Caesar, uh, who was twice awarded the crown but turned it down, was fearing that he might be awarded the crown again and turn accept the kingship, 
was what led the conspirators to kill him in that sense that he was going to not just that he was because he's a tyrant but he wanted to become king and he was king as dictator uh, he was ruling like a king and therefore he was about to take the name of king okay and I think you have to understand the Romans had a phobia about the king in a way that the Greeks do not have with Basi. The, the Rex for Greeks, the Rex for the Romans is not like the Basileus for the Greek. The Greek king does not have the same fear and loathing and uh, patrimonial fear as the, the Rex in Latin does. This is why Oedipus Tyrannos in the Greek is translated as Oedipus Rex. Now Oedipus the king. Here, the king has the has the sense of a terenos. And the, you have a big argument, what does terenos mean in the Greek? That it just means that, that the fact that he's not lawfully king. Um, he's a he, tyrant. He is a king, but he's not lawfully king. Um, even though he is lawfully king in a sense, that he, he does not come about it lawfully in that sense. He is the son of the king, but... He does not. Uh, he, he kills the king, and he gets the king by killing the king, and you know becomes king when the, the dead king is there. And they don't realize that he's the killer of the king. Uh, 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 that's the story of Oedipus, right? That he is, he is the he is a king, um, um, uh, but he, he gets the title of king wrongfully, and he does some shameful thing, right? But this is the thing. Even that is not. This is why he's called Tyrant Tyrannos not you know and therefore but the problem with this is that in, in the greek it's good enough to call him and latin it's good enough to call him rex now why did i talk about that because you have to understand this 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 fear to understand why machiavelli calls it the prince and why he talks about the principates on principates on principato palibus the title the title now the original book is like you can say the first part and then he expands it. So therefore, this is we have to understand the different type. Of, you know, the first part of the book, which really deals into chapter 13, 14, Right? This is, um, this is where we get the thrust of a civil principates, strength of princes. Uh, it is right around there. Uh, ecclesiastical principate is not 13. It's, it's number 11, right? 11 is the end. And then uh, we have ecclesiastical principates ending, wrapping up uh, in chapter 11, and then getting a, a new discussion, chapter 12. So therefore, there is this breach of the prince. There is the break, the logical breaking of the prince. So basically, 1 through 12 is this first part, that principates about princes, okay, types of princes, the variety of princes. And we're going to be talking about it. And we, we see the sketch of what he's going to do here, right? So let's let's turn to the text. The first chapter is one, how many, what are the kinds of principates? principates um, and what are they? And by what modes, modes, not regimes, not type of regimes, but principates, the man, the ruler in that sense. What type of principates? Not regimes. He, he doesn't speak of politeia, like Aristotle will talk about politeia, or the, the regimes, or you know, cities. He speaks of the man, the principates, and they are, and by what modes they are acquired. Now, modo... Translated throughout his mode, Machiavelli is a good weaver, weaves a texture, a texture with a certain pattern, preserves, uh, a, 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 in other words, in which a certain recurring pattern serves as an important ascent in the complete design. I wish to preserve these patterns as much as possible. Or uses the word mode in that sense. He's a weaver, he's a good weaver, chapter two. You use the metaphor of a weaver. One of Machiavelli's most significant phrases. Um, uh, 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 is uh, phrases is, is of course modo et ordinare novare new modes and order orders right this is you know thing here um, and he makes mentions to some books that talk about this um, he says um, 
uh, in the introduction, see what it says I say about this. I'm not going to read the introduction. If you know the, the Alvarez introduction, go check it out. The Alvarez also wrote a wonderful book called The Machiavelli Enterprise by NIU 1999. I re strongly recommend. Uh, it's, it's basically a commentary on the prints in that sense, right? Uh, um, uh, and goes out the prints chapter by chapter, but in, in the same way, I mean, in a way very similar in a sense. Um, he goes, uh, look, 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 Father, uh, Father Leslie Walker's translation of the discourses, he says, he points out in volume two that Mordo, uh, Modus de Ordo is the Latin translation of the uh, uh, Aristotle's Taxus, right? C.F. Thomas and uh, Thomas Aquinas in Politics, this line, liver, book four, section one, right? Machiavelli then sets out to discover not a new method of studying political things, but the new arrange, new political arrangement in regard to both uh, uh, structures and polities. Walker's, this is Walker's uh, 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 a review of metaphysics. This is where Strauss is quoting, you know, uh, uh, the review of metaphysics. Stra uh, is reviewing, um, not review of metaphysics, Strauss is reviewing uh, in the review of metaphysics the um, uh, the Walker's Machiavelli, Walker's translation of Machiavelli, and, and this is also published. This is not only also, this is also republished in what is political philosophy with the the end book reviews at the end of it. So therefore, in other words, this is where he's concerned with what modes uh, and they are acquired. In other words, the types of princes and how and what modes or techniques they are acquired, the ways they are acquired, uh, or, or the orders, the taxes. Mordo the uh, uh, order is, is like taxes, the, the, the arrangement they are acquired, that they are acquired in that sense. So as he says, this is not, not a new political arrangement, but rather, uh, 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 in other words, not a new things, a me new method of studying things, but rather new political arrangement. So it's not a new style of politics, but rather following this, studying a new arrangement of things. So let's start. This is one paragraph long. This is the very interesting thing. Again, De Alvarez always gives us the Latin translation of the title. Every title has the thing here, and that the Latin translation is titles at the bottom of it. Remember, the text is always designed that the t t titles always are in Latin, and, but the text is Italian. All the stats. Now, this is why this is status, uh, stat, stato, la stato. This is one of those weird, important words. Uh, the state is the word to be translated throughout, even when it seems incorrect usage, uh, incorrect current usage. Machiavelli here is uh, using the term meaning which today arises in the great part out, uh, out of the way Machiavelli uses it. In other words, Machiavelli is how Machiavelli uses Lestato is the way by which the term state becomes now synonymous with how we use it. Machiavelli can be said to be the, our current use of the word state and how we apply the concept of state. Um, it uh, derives from Machiavelli in a sense, or, or, or and starts from Machiavelli and then, and then ref, uh, continually reframed and then like with first with from this personal use of the, the ordering of a prince through Machiavelli of a personalized, you know, entity order giving order to it then to the depersonalized or, or ag aggregate construction of someone let's say let's say uh, 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 Thomas's Hobbes and his version of the Viathan in the state right and then those who follow Hobbes from this point on uh, the constituted power right the, the body politic um, um, in other words, uh, 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 in a great part of, a, uh, of a Machiavelli what uses it. It is important, therefore, to see clearly what he means by it. And this one can do so by preserving its original usage, in a sense. So this is why he used, uh, the Alvarez will use the state in his terms. So in all states and in all dominions that have ever had imperium, that's why I use the word imperium, 
Imperium is an important word. Imperium translated here in most cases as imperium. La imperio. Translated here as most cases imperium. And its original meaning is the command in war, exercise of life and death, and, uh, uh, and is the interpretation of execution of the law. Execution, imperium. To execute, to take life and death uh, uh, in the jurisdiction of command. Execution of the law is usually mean, of course, execution uh, um, death penalty. Uh, see Oxford Classical Dictionary, second edition, for a discussion of the term. A few places, uh, uh, in a few places, context indicates that the uh, uh, that empire, in the sense of dominion over territories, meant so therefore the change of imperium versus the idea of exercise of power of life and death versus uh, of the thing being exercised over imperium the empire in that sense of two ways you would do it now in other words all all the states have all have all the states all the dominions that have ever had that that have had and have have had and have imperium over men, exercise of command over men, power of life and death in that sense, right? command power, have been and are either republics or principates. So therefore, all the all the dominions, all the orders. Now this is that, that this is interesting. The, the, he uses notice that he uses dominions here, which is very important to, to remember the two different orders of principates and dominiums. One move from the institution, we can say maybe from the man to the institution, right? The, uh, so therefore, the prince has command and shapes the institution. So of all the states and all the dominions that it had and have imperial power over men, have been and either are, are, are republics or principates, these are two. So ironically, this sounds like a regime question. That the, that, the, that the dominions are really the things, and the states are regimes in the sense. Okay, uh, 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 this sounds like this, right? All states and this. This is principally either republics or all states are either what republics or principates. Principates are, now, now principates are either hereditary in which the blood, or the singa, singa, right, of their lords has for a long time been principal. Or new. So, long time old, long time new, right? So we have a structure here. We have the structure. He gives starts giving us a, a, an ordering of what he's going to talk about. So, principates are either hereditary in which so either republics or principates. So this leads people why this. This will lead people to think, well, I'm talking about the prince here, therefore republics must be discourses. This is a misleading thing. No. These two principates here, but then the principates, in other words, all states he speaks of are this. Now, principates are within states. They are those who govern states. Those who give and make shaping of states. So the first sentence misleads us. Thinking, think we are thought at first to think that he's talking about states, but no, all states are too kind. And then he will say, "Oh, principates, okay, this." But at the same time, who are really principates? Principates are even republics. Well, have principates, he will point to. Principates are either hereditary in which the blood of their lords have been long established, has had long time been princely, or they are new. So old, or old principates are new. They, the new are either all new, as was Milan of uh, Francesco Sforza, the great founder, you know, you know, he was the dictator. Sforza is a very interesting case because he is what he is, Sforza is an indicator. He overthrew the Republic of Milan. He's a, you know, an interesting case. But he's a new prince, right? Uh, 
of the or uh, are like members adjoined to the hereditary state of the prince who acquires them. In other words, acquires. In other words, there's another word, acquires. He has a note here, seven equitestas, equiestere, uh, translated throughout as acquire. He uses the word, this word four times in this very short chapter, three times in the body, and uh, uh, three times in the body and its Latin equivalent in the title. Um, he also uses it in the first sentence of the Epistle Dedicatory. Uh, see chapter 3 below, where the, the desire to acquire is spoken of as very natural ordinary. It is perhaps the natural and ordinary passions of all human beings. So, acquire. So, in other words, uh, in other words the, it's that the, 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 the hereditary prince who acquires them, that's the Nudanu prince, right? Uh, 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 as the kingdom of Naples for the king of Spain. And this is, again, king of Spain is Ferdinand, right? This is the, 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 the dominions thus acquired are either habituated to living under a prince or are used to being free. So therefore they're either used to being living under a prince or left to being free. And they, so therefore, the two types of people, the people who are the, the dominions, the lands, the people, are they are, are habituated to being a, a, a living under prince or they're living under free. And that they are acquired either with the arms of others or one's arms. So they're acquired, these, the, all these things, these, these, these things that are acquired. Either the new republic, the new the new principate, or the 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 the, 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 the king who acquires a new territory. Uh, 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 these are acquired, either uh, uh, habituated living to a living under a prince or used to being free, and they are acquired either by the arms of others or one's own, right? So about some other else's arms or your own arms, and either by fortune or by virtue. So we have a very interesting entity here. Um, in fact, uh, I, I'm going to pay attention to virtue for a second. La virtu, translated as virtue. A deliberate ambiguity in the term virtu is pres uh, thereby preserved in this tense, because people translate this in different ways. Virtue, he uses virtu, and he translates as virtue. Virtue in Machiavelli is not the same uh, uh, as uh, Aristotle or the Sac Republic or, or, or Cicero or even for, uh, Plato as, as a moral virtue, as some kind of excellence. This is something com coming from the man, ver, the ver in that sense, something masculine, something manly too. So therefore, the, he, he, he wants to play on, you know, Machiavelli plays on the traditional meaning of words and then plays on the uh, uh, the roots of language to make a new meaning of things. So here we end the, the first chapter, a very short chapter. We get this outline, kind of outline where he's going to promise to take us and what comes next. We'll see that what thing comes next is what? Hereditary princes. So we'll stop here. Um, we will, uh, 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 if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. And I will respond to them when I see them. Please like the chat, like it, hit the like button, share it far and wide, and get people's attention to come check out the channel, check out the new series. Um, um, if you have any, like I said, if you've not subscribed, do subscribe. Encourage others to come check the channel out and then also subscribe. We're gonna grow, grow things. Another thing you can do is if you didn't like it, you can say why you didn't like it, and therefore we can benefit from it. Next thing you can do is here is, well, go check out my social media links, okay, below. If you want to know more about me as a researcher and a scholar and check out my scholarship and things like that, you can do so through the academic social media links below the social media links. And then last but not, not last but not least, but if you want to help me do what I do here, you can do so financially or uh, 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 means like this. You can do so through Patreon or Subscribestar. Um, uh, uh, it, it'll help in that sense. Uh, the links are below in that sense. 
oh, I want to be a patron or an assistant, you know, you know, financially in that sense. You can do so on Patreon and subscribe star. Um, or you can just simply buy one of my books that are listed below and then go either order it either through your local bookstore or to an online bookseller like Amazon or Brown Noble or Libras or other things or through the publisher themselves. Okay, well, that's it. We'll turn next time. We'll turn to chapter two, which we look at the Redditary Princess. Bye-bye. Take care.